Coming up on show 634, the 1000 horsepower touring car concept, an electric G-Wagon and a Ford Mustang inspired EV is pictured. Those stories and many more coming up on the podcast today. Good morning, good afternoon or good evening. Wherever you're listening in the world, welcome to EV News Daily. My name is Martin Lee. I go through all the EV news every day to save you time because I know that you are super busy. This is what you need to know. I don't always get to publish it on the day of the news, though. I am running a couple of days behind schedule at the moment, catching up with my, my publishing and actually recording the podcast itself. I've been super busy. I guess what they would, uh, what you call big life events have been happening. And that has. Uh, not got in the way of the podcast because they're very happy events, but <sighs> I'm slightly slightly behind on the podcast. Thank you for bearing with me. Uh, if you haven't checked out myev.com yet, they do help me make this show. Uh, they are a marketplace in the USA all about cars with plug sockets. Totally free to use, so whether you're buying or whether you're selling... Have you checked out myev.com yet? I think you should. Well, the launch of the Taycan Porsche Financial Services is now offering not only established motor vehicle insurance, but also a very special policy that's tailored towards only electric cars, reports Electrive. According to the press release, this new insurance policy for Taycan owners supplements the existing Porsche car policy with things like special protection for the battery and your car uh, car charging station and mobility protection, they say. Porsche didn't give out in, in any information on the cost and detailed conditions in the press release. A highlight of what they call e-cover is the original price protection for the battery in the event of damage. Extensive, and this is interesting, what they call extensive cyber protection is another innovative component of the product. Why do you need cyber protection? It sounds like some kind of hacker is going to be hacking into your Porsche Taycan, and if they do, you're insured against it? No, I'm sure I'm reading this wrong. A special insurance policy, again, not aimed at the likes of you and I, but aimed at the likes of the Taycan owner and the Taycan buyer, perhaps that need a little bit extra reassurance. If you're spending 150 or 200,000, then there's a special insurance policy that'll that'll look after you. Something that Porsche are doing. And yes, if you're thinking, hmm, that sounds like Tesla insurance. I think I don't think it's uh in either in the same league or a comparable product, but I, I, I get where you'd be coming from if you were thinking that. Right, let's move on. And a containerized battery storage system to be used at sea will be installed in a trial on board a ship this uh, this year, actually, December, so next month, and it's going to improve vessel performance and reliability, It'll reduce CO2 emissions, says Green Car Congress. But get this, the size of the battery is 600 kilowatt hours. That is a chunky battery. Wouldn't mind one of those in the garage. Blimey, you'd be going off grid for a a fair few weeks, wouldn't you? And the rest. Propelling marine vessels with battery power alone is still years away, though, from being uh, technically and economically viable for many of those long-distance trips that ship all of those goods that we use around the world. However, marine battery systems can be used to improve the efficiency of a vessel's onboard electrical systems and generators by maintaining the vessel's auxiliary generators at a more optimal load. You can avoid running generators when not needed, and therefore the overall fuel consumption can be reduced, a bit like... If you were to think about the the the, the road going equivalent of a of a of a, an, a motor in an EV, so like the Nissan E Power technology, uh, where the motor spins up, charges the battery till the battery's full, then the motor shuts down, and then the car drives on battery power. Yes, you've had to put petrol into the thing, but it's about efficiency and 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 you know small gains, but they're gains, and we'll take them. Right, let's move on to Citroen, or Citroen, as maybe I should say. And let's talk the C5 Aircross Hybrid. They've launched a plug-in hybrid version of the C5 Aircross SUV, uh, bringing CO2 emissions down to just 39 grams per kilometre, and electric-only range of, drumroll please, 31 miles. According to Fleet World, uh, it's going to cost, in this country, uh, £35,000 and a bit, starting deliveries mid-next year. The C5 Aircross Hybrid has a 180-horsepower petrol engine and a 109-horsepower electric motor. 
Uh, it's got a 100% electric range, like I say, of 31 miles, and the battery is 13.2 kilowatt hours. That has an eight-year, 100,000-mile warranty, guaranteeing 70% of its charge after that amount of time. Onboard charger, 7.4 kilowatts on that. I imagine if it's a plug-in hybrid, people will just be charging overnight. So although I was at Fleet Services on the M3 motorway, heading northbound, uh, morning rush hour. And yes, I did see a Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid on the only uh, rapid charger that was at the motorway service station. And no, there was no other EV queuing. So really, what's the harm? Well, I don't know about you, but if I'm driving and I pull up to a charger, then maybe I'll try and limp on to the next one. If I'm desperate, maybe I'll have to wait. However, Mm, I do think, I mean, obviously, uh, nothing against Mitsubishi Outlander drivers. We're on a motorway. It's the only rapid charger with AC on it, and you're plugging in your plug-in hybrid. Uh, they weren't with the vehicle because I had a good look. I was just being nosy. I don't know. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't bother me, but it, I did sort of notice it and think, oh, you know, I can see a time when that might be a problem. Okay, let's move on. And DTM, otherwise known as German Touring Cars, Deutsche Tourenwagen Masters, has introduced a 1,000 horsepower concept for the future for what will inevitably be an all-electric series. That's a massive upgrade from the series' current 600 horsepower combustion engines, reports Jalopnik. Well, a press release makes it very clear that the new eco-friendly series will run alongside existing German touring cars. It will not be replacing it just yet. A DTM's promoter is called ITR. They're keen on keeping both series around as long as possible. Okay, on to Mercedes-Benz next. Ola Kalenius is the chairman of Daimler and the head of Mercedes-Benz and confirmed today that the company will produce an all-electric version of the iconic G-Class wagon, says Fred at Electric. The introduction of a G-Class wagon, which at the minute is rated at 14 miles per gallon for the old fossil burner, uh, would transform one of Mercedes' biggest gas guzzlers into a zero-emissions vehicle. Uh, the G-Class wagon, I would say, is a bit of a cult vehicle in certain circles, but it's definitely not an eco-friendly choice. But it's certainly a distinctive car on the roads, and Kalenius mentioned that there'd been discussions to eliminate the iconic model. Apparently, instead, make it an EV. I know plenty of people will be listening to this podcast happy at that news. Like I say, the G-Class wagon bit of a cult model, actually, because of its distinctive boxy looks and go-anywhere, rugged nature, all electric, tons of torque, big battery pack in there. Man, that'll be nice. All right, let's talk trucks next. Uh, yesterday, the electric commercial vehicle pioneer Teva and former guest of this podcast, uh, Teva Motors Unveiled, their Electrify initiative. They want the electrification of medium-duty trucks. Uh, maybe I should say lorries or, I don't know, semi-trucks, depending on where you're listening around the world. There's going to be 50 of them across the UK and Europe. And according to Greenbiz website, Teva has developed a package of EV technologies for trucks or commercial vehicles. Battery packs are at the heart of it, but fleet management systems are important. An advanced cloud-based software that uses geofencing capabilities to autonomously control a range extender engine and ensure vehicles can switch to zero emissions mode to optimize efficiency and minimize air pollution in built-up areas. And if you'd like to know more about the Teva story, T-E-V-V-A, uh, you can check out my blog, evnewsdaily.com. In the search box, search Teva. Hear the previous Saturday special interview that I did uh, with them, which is their take on electrified commercial trucking, which is to use range extenders uh, rather than pure EVs. And they make a good argument for it as well. All right, let's talk Hyundai and the Ionic Electric has got its EPA rated range if you're interested. The 2020 Model year Hyundai Ionic Pure Electric is up to 170 EPA miles. According to results posted by the federal agency, says Green Car Reports, uh, that goes up from 28 kilowatt hours in the current model to 38 kilowatt hours in the new model. EPA testing confirms the Ionic will get the same motor upgrade given in other markets around the world. 
So the output goes from 118 to 134 horsepower, a welcome bump. All right, two more stories. And the Ford Mustang inspired electric SUV unveiling is scheduled for just over a week's time, November 17th, ahead of the LA Auto Show. But before we see the Ford all electric SUV, we already have seen some photos with barely any camouflage on, according to Inside EVs. It seems that the new long-range, pure electric Ford is more crossover than SUV. Lower rather than a big SUV style. Size and shape, we'll probably put it in the same segment as, you got to say, and it is the cliche to bring this up, the Tesla Model Y. It is indeed the thing to do comparing pretty much new EVs to like, where does it fit in compare competing with Tesla? But you know why we have to do that. All right, final story. And let's go back to Daimler. The former Daimler CEO, Dieter Zetcher, recently shared his thoughts on the electric car revolution that played uh, the part played by the American automaker Tesla. Now he's retired and he has no commitments to a specific automaker. Uh, Zetcher freely uh, praised Elon Musk, singled him out for praise, stating that he adores the Tesla CEO. According to Simon Alvarez at Tesla Rati, and despite that admiration for Elon, he does believe that established automakers will always be ahead. Volkswagen, BMW and Daimler making big moves on electromobility. And he believes that no matter what the head start that Tesla has, the Germans will always be in the lead. Your thoughts on a postcard, please. Uh, right, question of the week. We're asking you what you prefer, the carrot or the stick. Do you prefer incentives to drive EVs or penalties for polluters? You can always email this show anytime. My personal email address is hello at evnewsdaily.com. Thank you to 234 patrons of the podcast. Well, Patreon's a website which you can, if you want to, support creative endeavours. Uh, patreon.com slash evnewsdaily my premium partners of the podcast thank you Phil Roberts of Electric Future Brad Crosby and Avid Technology there are 633 previous episodes online and the new shows come at you if you're a subscriber don't think about downloading it manually each day just hit subscribe and you'll get it automatically come and say hi online by searching EV News Daily. have a wonderful day I'll catch you soon remember there's no such thing as a self-charging hybrid <laughs>